and it has everything in it. And I'm not asking anybody to read it cover to cover, but that is one example of how you find out how to see this relationship that you need to have with your wife, to understand this relationship that you will have with your wife or spouse. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah. So let, so let's, well, I was let's say, okay, go ahead. Go ahead I, kinda, uh, I think I get what you're saying now. We read the Bible. We see how Jesus loved his people. Jesus loved the church. Apply that in our life. Things will begin changing. True that, brother. Is that what you're saying? But, so, so let, yeah. so what I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a minute. And we know that a lot of relationships um, are, are challenged because of unhealthy boundaries, either unhealthy ties inside the marriage to people outside the marriage or over attention to, um, you know, the children where there's not balance. Um, it's, it's interesting when we look, if, if we're going to hearken back to biblical standards, if we're going to use that as a guideline. Um, one of the things that was very interesting is that uh, the marriage bed was considered the absolute holiest place between man and woman, you know, that, that was considered almost like a sanctuary. So there wasn't supposed to be anything else in there, you know, and that was supposed to be their place. And even in the Jewish custom, a man wasn't even to work for the first year. He was just to work out the the whole engagement process was to save up resources so that he could stay home during the first year just to attend to his wife's needs. So she could be stable in his affection. They could work out their conflicts so that their marriages would be strong. They would have input from the elders who were uh, guiding him in terms of the responsibilities of husbandship. Uh, And the uh, wise women of of the community would instill positive uh, values in terms of womanhood into the uh, into the woman in the relationship. So you you saw this sort of generational strengthening in the Jewish family. lasts you know, or has has lasted for for many many millennia primarily because of these philosophies um but that being said now we we fast forward to modern times and we realize that the value of marriage isn't seen the same way we look at it as a tax write off we look at it as a you know a, a right to be acquired we look at it as something tossed around uh in divorce courts often so marriage is not held in the same regard as it once was. So people don't look at that relationship as necessarily more special than, say, a relationship between a mom and a daughter um, or a mom and a son. They don't see that as any more special. What they see is I've got a responsibility to those people who gave to me, and now I have a responsibility to those that I've been given. So whether that be a man who says, I'm going to take care of my my folks when they get old, or whether that be a woman who says, I'm going to hang out with my mom on every Wednesday, regardless of what you say. And I think that sets an unhealthy boundary. Sometimes you have to get out there and just say, this this person doesn't look at marriage the same way, or this person is not looking at the value of this relationship in the same way. And you will always be disappointed when you don't have similar expectations for the outcome of any decision. So the key is communicating this ahead of time, what your expectation is. And if someone isn't able to meet that, at that point, you need to go into it. So guys who are not married and who are considering a long-term relationship with a woman, you got to ask these questions. If I had been given a dime for the kind of wisdom that I've gained through through the years and if somebody had said hey you might be feeling all warm and fuzzy because she's got a great figure she's giggling at your jokes and she knows how to put it down in the kitchen you may not even ask the question hey what's going to happen when we get married is mm-hmm. your mom going to be over every tuesday you know is your dad gonna-? you know you don't even think to ask that question because you presume she's got the same thing in her head as you got in yours hey aren't we going to be having the frisky time <laughs> every day now <laughs> you got that in your head <laughs> you know what i'm saying come on <laughs> come on now i'm not the only one who, who's thinking it right Right now you thinking yeah yeah it's gonna be on uh-huh. now I got her in the no, house and everything you know we we gonna be <laughs> doing the slapping tick go on ahead say it tell the truth <laughs> and it's funny because you say that because come on my man pastor actually ended up saying he was like listen really when you do marriage counseling when you first get married he was like man we need to bring everybody in there he was like you need your mama your daddy his mama his daddy her mama, oh, her daddy. everybody everybody needs to be in there when you first get marriage counseling like listen you guys on this side here's some expectations like you said here's the electric fence here's the boundary you guys on this side here's the boundary you know yeah, and, and I yeah. feel like that, that yeah. that's kind of missing like you said everybody kind of has this common ground i thought when i got married it was just natural duh we were going to get along they were going to their family and my family we're going to hang out together and it was just going to be all peachy king and that's that's yeah. exactly the opposite of how it went you know somebody's shaking somebody else's yeah, hand somebody doesn't yeah. want to meet somebody else and, and i'm like man like wow guys i thought we we're all going to hang out and be cool together 
<laughs> when they make a decision, they think it's the happy path, which is stress-free, challenge-free, smooth sailing with everything working in harmony. What we don't figure is that there are bumps along the road, incongruities with our thought process and the reality of the circumstance, and our expectations being out of line with the reality of what we need to have happening. We're talking with three awesome gentlemen. What do we do when we're put last in the consideration of our significant others? And we've covered so far the understanding of relating what we believe are healthy boundaries to a good relationship, questions that need to be asked prior to marriage so that expectations are clearly enunciated. And then we also understand that there will be times when conflict arises over these very issues. And those are not necessarily bad things. Those are opportunities for polishing and smoothing of the the stony side of our characters. We've talked about people outside setting healthy boundaries. We've talked a little bit about the notion of children in that we have a vested interest. But can children take up too much of the attention of parents? And do you need to set up boundaries so that there are times when it's just you two? Or do we just give of ourselves till it hurts? And guys, do we just put our needs on hold? Or do we run the risk of harming our marriages when we put our needs on hold? Is there any problem with doing that? No love, 73. I'm going to chime in. Yes, there is a problem if a man can to put his needs on hold. The problem is <clears throat> it's an unbalanced, an unstable relationship. If you want your car to run good, efficient, smooth, you need to make sure you have all of the adequate liquids to make your car run smooth. Well, you have to have the same thing in a relationship. And if a man or a female put something on hold, something is being neglected. If you have kids, still have to live your life as if you didn't have kids because the day don't stop. The relationship don't stop. It's funny how we become neglected when we have a child, but we end up with three and four kids. Where's the neglect? Where where do we come together? We only come together to bear kids because if that's the case, then we have a problem. And then the woman becomes overwhelmed. The man is still being neglected, but they have time to just squeeze in another kid, you know? And so I see that as an unstable and unbalanced in the relationship. We can make time only to come together to have sex, to bear another kid, but we can't make time to just spend time with each other, to really hold and embrace and talk, you know? So I look at it as a lot of excuses. We have time to go out here and go party. We have time to go and hang with our sisters or our girlfriends, but when it comes time to spending time with your spouse, there's a niche. And I see that consistently in relationships, and this is one of the big downfalls in relationships, especially marital relationships, with a husband and a wife, because there's always someone tired. But you're not too tired to bear another kid. Mm-hmm. Not too tired mm-hmm. to go mm-hmm. hang with your friends. And sit Frankly, I'm tired of the excuses yeah. that we always bring in about us being tired, but we're not too tired to do what we want to do for self. You see, now you can hear the passion in your voice because I think this is a real issue. And one of the things that I think is so amazing about our society is we never punish for sins of omission. Nola, you just created the most common scenario that most men face in marriage, which is when when a man is courting a woman, she's all attending to his need. The maternal clock starts to tick. She has a child. All of a sudden, her only thought and priority, number one, is her kids. Wait a minute now. I mean, I signed up for this situation, but I didn't sign up to be left out. Why is it that you can omit my needs and think that's okay? Because we have a society that basically says men's needs need to be put on hold. You got, you can tough it out, bro. You can tough it out. When a man gets to a point where he's been neglected for a long time and he says those words, I'm tired of this. Now y'all know what that means. When a man says, I'm tired, and you hear that, you know what that means. You know that means he's checked out. And it's, the same, he's, and you know, it's the same yeah, thing as a yeah. woman saying, I'm fed up. Right. A guy will check his mind out, but his body will still be there because of his responsibility. And he'll walk through the motions because he's got to meet the expectations of society. But he's dead inside. And one of the things that I think is really amazing is when that guy goes and finds some woman or some activity that meets that need, i.e. addictions, i.e. relationship issues or getting outside and having your needs met outside of that marriage incorrectly, then we are quick to punish the guy and say, hey, wait a minute now, you know, you know, you're not supposed to do that. Nobody bother to look at the 10 years of sexless marriage or 10 years of neglect or 10 years of constantly put on hold. So it's really important to consider issues of omission. So when we neglect or when we omit the dealing uh, with a man's emotions or a man's needs, we really do weaken the fabric of a family. And again, we keep talking about these areas that weaken the fabric of the family. The first thing is poorly set boundaries. Number two is poorly communicated expectations. And number three is uh, the, the sins of omission. And taking time to prioritize over your mate will likely result in the mate becoming resentful. And that is what Nola was really communicating, this notion of resentment and anger. And even if you don't physically leave the relationship physically 
In other words, the guy still comes home. His mind, his heart, his thoughts, his needs are being met outside the home. And it doesn't take that long before and guys become far more susceptible to dual relationships and or adulterous affairs or addiction. And we talked about addiction in another another topic uh, earlier, and you can refer back to that podcast. But these are I think this is a very real topic that if you put somebody on hold, they're going to likely fill that void with someone other than you. And I think every woman needs to be aware of that. And I think guys need to come to grips with voicing and being brave enough to say, no, 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 we really need this to be taken care of. And the question now is, guys, how do we voice that so that it can be taken Mary care of? Here. Uh, my, my thought on that was a word that you used in your second little note you just had, communication. Because if you do not communicate with your significant your your wife, your spouse, and your needs. I mean, because that's what we're here for. We're here for each for each other. Nothing really outside of our family unit takes any control over what we're communicating because we're husband and wife, me and my wife, and we communicate that those needs will be met. And yes, I want to say this to, to BA's comment. This is Nona seventy three. Meet you where you at. Communication is the key. Like Kirk said earlier, most of the time with a man, a man would check out mentally before he check out physically. And if that man has checked out mentally, I think communication had been because we will reciprocate. Yeah. We will state yeah. that, you know what? This is going on long enough. I need to meet myself. I don't know how blatant I can put it, but I need to, you know, we need to come together we need to do something. But I've seen it so many times and been through it so many times to where a woman is like, well, you know what? I'm tired. Let's hold on. Or, let's plan. I don't want to plan. There's no such thing as let's plan to me when I've ne- been neglected for two, three, four weeks now. And yeah. at the beginning of the see, relationship. See, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold, hold, hold on. We need, we, no, we need to go there. We need I, to I go agree. There. I'm, hold I'm on, don't, on it too. Yeah, don't, don't go over that. Don't gloss over that. Okay. Go ahead. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, let uh, Mustang chime in. And then I got a couple of comments because you, Nola, you got a point right there, and, and and we need to we need to hone in on that. Go no, ahead. No, no, Mustang. no, please go because I, I think mine is going to be contrary. So I think I'll be able to fit two stones into one <laughs> to one sling no. if you go. <laughs> so I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Well, well let, let me let me talk about this. Okay, I'm I'm going to be real. Let me let me be real. First of all, Nola, I appreciate your candor because I think there are a lot of guys where you're at. Not, I mean, not, I mean, just you. you I have left a marriage for what you're talking about. So I'm going to I'm going to put it on the line that not only do I think you're right, I think most women don't understand how far gone and how long a man can be f- mentally out of a relationship before his body leaves. I, you know, I can tell you I was seven years gone. I mean, everything. I mean, there were years I was gone out. I mean, just my mind was not there. I worked. I I was an elder in the church. I showed up, paid my bills, paid my tithe, you know, served on the different little, you know, boards and and did my little service to the community. And and no, I mean, everything on the outside, you know, dressed in, we all dressed in similar clothes, but I was gone. I was gone because my needs were never met, ever. And the thing that was, was really impactful is that every pastor, and this is one of the reasons why I decided I was going to bring this up. Every pastor says, you know what? If you loved Christ as the church, you would give yourself for it. But Christ himself said, love your neighbor as yourself. And there are some needs you cannot meet alone. Because God said at the very beginning when he provided man, while man was standing in the presence of a most holy God, God said it is not good for man to be alone. He was standing in the presence of an almighty, omniscient, omnipresent God. So if, if it wasn't a good thing for him to be standing there alone, in the presence of God, then what responsibility does a woman have in meeting the needs of her man? A big one. That means she was created for a purpose. Everything is created for a purpose. And I think far too often we are, we are quick to jump on guys for neglecting their responsibilities, but we don't take the same level of intensity and say, we've got to hold mates and partners accountable. And we have to be clear when we say, hey, wait a minute, I hear what you're saying, but let me communicate to you candidly. I want to make sure that my needs are met in you and that I'm meeting your needs. And if it turns out that a woman is unwilling or unable to meet your needs while you're still continuing to meet hers, you best understand that resentment, no matter how kind you are, sooner or later will set in. Because you cannot deprive yourself of meals too long before you begin to starve. And even if you physically don't eat at somebody else's plate, off somebody else's plate, tell, I'm going to tell you the table is set in somebody else's, in somebody else's house. It's going to be. 
And there are very few men who will continuously for decades be neglected inside of a relationship and not find emotional fulfillment, if not emotional and fulfill, uh, physical fulfillment, outside of a relationship. I dare say, being on the outside of a marriage and having been divorced, that I... 